Hey guys, what's up? It's Darkmeg here and welcome back to another video today, continuing on my Mythic Plus uh, series in regards to giving you guys an example of what pathing to take, what mobs to pull, uh, skips and things like that. We are in Motherload today. So Motherload is an interesting dungeon. You have a couple of options here. One is Shroud Double Death Skip. Uh, the other is no Shroud Double Death Skip. The other is a single Death Skip up the last hill. And of course, the other option is no shroud and no death skip. So the one I'm going to be showing you today uh, is a rogue with a shroud at the start. However, there will be no death skips through this at all. Now, if you don't have a rogue, this isn't a huge issue as what you can do is you just kill the mobs through the first section and then you uh, elect to not kill some packs on the way to just lessen that percentage that you got through the first room. Now, the reason that we shroud through this first section is pretty simple. It's just so we don't have to deal with two infested mobs. The mobs in this first section aren't overly uh, annoying or dangerous or anything like that. It's We just pretty much designed our pathing around dealing with uh, the least amount of infested mobs as we could, as it just makes it quicker to progress. So we shroud through here and we go to this first section here, or the second section, sorry, where we double pull this pack. Now, the really important ones here are the hired assassins. You want to make sure that you're interrupting their toxic blades. And then when they go to do their hail, you really need to ensure that you are stunning that, especially if they are enraged. Uh, the mech jockeys will make a beeline for the peacekeepers. If you want to, you can let them get into the peacekeepers. We actually do let two get into the peacekeepers. Main reason being is a mech jockey is worth about 0.96% uh, on its own. If it gets into the peacekeeper, it's worth 2.88%. So they're an easy way to bolster up your uh, percent, your uh, mob percentage, if that's what you want to do. The main thing is you just need to make sure that you manage the uh, peacekeepers properly. So the peacekeepers will put down an energy shield, which you want to keep facing away from your group uh, and not make a perfect little safe bubble for them like I did just then, uh, as they'll block all attacks coming from the front. They'll also put down a poison cloud. You can see that large orange swirl um, turns into a, a grenade, which turns into a poison cloud. If you run into it, you get disorientated. That's not what you want to do. The thugs will enrage uh, and you can dispel that. Uh, so you can soothe that off or if you're a hunter, they can trank it off. Um, otherwise, there's, there's not too many dangers sort of in these packs. Again, the main ones are really those hired assassins. Just make sure that you interrupt the toxic blade and you stun them when they go to hail. So we're going to kill the two packs together when we come out. We're going to kill that padding mob. We're then going to hug this left side of the building here and we're going to kill the thug and the double hired assassins. Again, make sure you're assigning interrupts through these guys. The biggest thing with uh, running Mythic Plus, I think, is having a, a planned out strategy and not just going in full YOLO mode. So with the hired assassins, make sure you have stuns, AOE stuns sorted out, interrupts sorted out for your toxic blades. Remember that you can grip things as a DK off those casts. Um, in cap raw, paralysis, leg sweeps, ring of pieces, whatever you've got at your disposal. And of course, when it is weeks like raging and things like that, when they enrage, make sure you use uh, the area that you've got. You can always kite and slow, especially with how ridiculously OP Frost Mage slow is at the moment. We're then going to uh, kill that pack and we're going to go up to the Thug, the Vendor and the Mech Jockey. Now the Vendors, they do the Ice Spritzer, which if the channel finishes, it will freeze someone. So you do want to make sure that you're interrupting them. They also have a uh, Cola uh, Refresher, which is a hot, which you want to interrupt as well. Uh, the mech jockey has nowhere to go here, so that's not a problem. Kill these, hug the right side here, and we're going to go up to this last pack before the first boss, which is the Peacekeeper, the Hired Assassin, and the Refreshment Vendor again. Again, Hired Assassin is the priority here. You want to be interrupting those Toxic Blades, and I just can't stress how important it is to make sure that you're interrupting or stunning the Hail guys, especially on Fortified. That will absolutely fuck your shit up if it goes off, especially if it has uh, toxic blades buff up as well. Again, there's the ice spritzer going off, just making sure we interrupt that. And that is pretty much it for this. 
Then we're on to the first boss. Now the first boss is relatively simple. You want to keep it facing away from your group. You're going to hold on to hero until the bombs get hit back into it. So it'll do a static pulse, which can knock you back. De uh, DKs, you can use death's advance to avoid getting knocked back there. Once we've kicked the first bombs into him, we're going to blow hero uh, because he's taking that extra damage. You'll also do a thing called shocking claw. Try and face the boss always away from your group so the boss will do the shocking claw onto you. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he will turn around and just do it uh, into fucking Nani or wherever he likes. You just need to make sure that you're running out of that. The static pulse is going to continue going off. Just watch where you're getting knocked back. Don't get knocked back out of the arena and possibly like reset it or something like that. When the coin piles go onto the ground, make sure you are running the boss away from it. Every time the coin piles drop, make sure you move. Make sure you're kicking the bombs back into him. If it's near you as the tank, you run over to it. It'll have a, a, a blue arrow going around it. Line it up with the boss, click it and kick it back at it. And that is pretty much it for this boss, guys. So once he's dead, we're going to move into this next section, which is the third section for us. Uh, and what we're going to do here is there is an infested mob on the right side. Now, we actually end up pulling it, but you can totally avoid this uh, if you like and just make up percent. Otherwise, if you don't want to deal with the infested, we're going to pull these three packs uh, and the pat wasn't in a good position, so we didn't get it. Keep in mind, though, if you do want to decide to pull the pattern here, you just really need to be careful once things hit raging. So the Earth Shapers are the big ones to watch out for as they will cast a thing called Rock Lance. If you get targeted by multiple Rock Lances, especially in raging, you are going to take a shit ton of damage. The Sappers are going to do a thing called Final Blast and throw out bombs. Just make sure you're not standing in the bombs. There's the Rock Lance again coming out from the Earth Shaper. You just need to watch out for that. They also do an Earthen Shield, which is great if you can interrupt, but Rock Lances are absolute priority for the interrupts. You can see there we ended up pulling uh, the infested pack over there. Great ring of peace to try and separate them. Just remember guys with infested, there's kind of two ways that you can always do infested. One is that you can pull it in with the pack and murk it down. The other is if the pack is large enough, CC them outside or CC as many infested as you can, round up all the other ones and then pull your infested together. The big thing with murking infested is if you're going into a giant pool and you're trying to murk that infested and it's got a lot of health or something like that, you're virtually just wasting all your AOE DPS if you're not killing the things around it or if you're not killing it quick enough. So uh, if you can separate them uh, or CC them, it's generally a good option unless it's a really small pool where you can just murk it inside and then switch to the Gahoonies. Uh, so we've got that down. Next, we're going to run up here and we're going to grab the pat and we're going to grab the mob to the right. If you are double death skipping throughout this, you are going to be killing in that second area that we stealth through to on the rogue. You're going to need to kill the majority of trash in there. You're then going to need to kill the majority of trash in here because the idea is once you hit down to the bottom of the minecart, you want to be 100% uh, on your mob count. So then you can do your double death skip, uh, death skip to Rixar, kill Rixar, death skip to uh, last boss Raz Dunk. Uh, throughout this area, some of the trash is fairly annoying. Again, you just need to watch with the Earth Shapers for their rock lands. It's definitely the most annoying bit, making sure that you're not standing in the final blast, which is fairly basic. Up the top uh, here, up the top of this hill, not the Elemental Earthway, but the other up and to the left, some of the trash is quite annoying. Some of the rats have really high health pools. There's also some of the machines that will do frontal cones uh, and again, have a lot of HP. So. Again, just choose what you're going to do. Method dungeon tools, I couldn't speak highly enough. There'll be a link in the description of this video uh, where to get uh, MDT. There'll also be my MDT pathing in there, but I couldn't recommend high enough in regards to sitting down with your group and planning through your dungeons in regards to what you're going to pull uh, and how you're going to pull it. Now, these elementals um, aren't really too bad. The big thing here is their tectonic barrier. If a tectonic barrier gets off, they have an absorption shield around them and then they do this furious quake. If the furious quake's going off and they have the tectonic barrier around them, you can't actually interrupt them. So it's really important to make sure that you're interrupting the tectonic barrier and the furious quakes. Uh, stun them, purge them off if the barrier does get off, but just really be careful of that. These mobs don't do a hell of a lot of damage. Uh, and again, it's not a four to five week, so you can go a little bit more riskier. Uh, on your trash pools. Again, it's really important that you play to your affixes and play to your group. And it's also important that you know what you're doing, that everybody knows what's going on. And again, that's the power of MDT. Now, some people actually elect to shroud this entire thing on fortified weeks. 
It is possible. Again, you just need to plan out what you're going to kill in replacement of it. Uh, as this pack, these packs or the Taskmaster pack in particular is worth a fair bit of percent. Now, Taskmaster uh, has the sappers around him again. Don't stand in the bombs. The Earth Shapers, you have to watch the Rock Lancers again. And Taskmaster himself, A, deals a fair bit of damage, does a Broad Slash, which is a cleave. He'll also do this thing called Cover, which redirects damage of enemies near him back to him at a reduced rate. I think it's about 75% damage reduction. When he's doing Cover, try and pull the mobs away from him so you can continue to kill them without that funnel to him on the damage reduction. The Wonton Sappers will Final Blast at the end, so just make sure you're running away from them. Uh, and then clean up Taskmaster. Now, once Taskmaster is dead, we are on to the second boss, which is uh, Azeroth. Now, with him, really simple boss. The simple thing about this boss is once the adds die, this boss becomes an absolute walkover. So the adds are the priority. Now, as a DK, you can run in, you can mass grip the adds. They are hard CCable and they are slowable. You want to grip them onto the boss and then you want to absolutely drop them. Now, you can typhoon them, you can ring a piece them, you can leg, uh, leg sweep them, you can sigil or chains them. You've got lots of options to be able to group them up here. Just make sure you do and you nuke them down ASAP. You want to avoid taking melee hits from the adds as it puts a stacking debuff, the jagged cuts on you, which puts a fair bit of pressure on your healer, especially on high Tyran keys. Uh, Azeroth will infuse adds, which makes them uh, immune to hard CC, so you need to watch out for that. Uh, he will also do a large frontal cone attack. You always want to be facing him away from your group, this tectonic smash, as if anyone gets hit by it, they're taking a lot of damage and they're getting stunned, which is bad. If you have trouble with killing the four adds off at the same time on like a Tyran level, you can use the two fracking totems at the start, uh, which are over to the right at the moment. With the fracking totems, you'll get an extra action button. Click on the ads, use your fracking totem, kill two of the ads, then kill the other two uh, ads that are uh, stunned by the fracking totem, and then kill the boss. But again, once you kill the ads, this boss becomes really easy. He will summon an Earth Rager. Uh, I don't know what the timer is on Earth Ragers, but he will summon an ad throughout the fight. It's only a single ad. Again, just kill the ad, get back onto the boss, and kill him. Uh, there's not really much else I can say about this. It's not a highly complex boss. Just kill the adds and keep it faced away and you will be pretty set for this boss. Once he is dead, we will be moving to the mine cart behind us. Now, something special happens in this. All you need to do, guys, is run and click on the mine cart. But you can see Dugs on his little uh, void strider there, right? Watch this. Boom. Boom. Congratulations, you are the fifth of fixed dogs. Uh, now, if you come down here and you are on your desk skip, you want to be at 100%. You are going to mount up. Your group is going to run in and go to the left. Your healer is going to run in and go to the right. Now, if they're an alliance uh, night elf, they're going to shadow meld and then they're going to get a mass res off. Otherwise, they're going to get a B res or a soul stone or a reincarnate or something like that over there. Hit the mass res off and they're going to res you. And that is the first desk skip. If you are not doing that desk skip, you are going over here to the left, or this is the way we go anyway. We're going behind the house here. Uh, the really important thing here, again, with the assistants, just watch out for them. Uh, they'll do a transfiguration serum. You need to interrupt that. We let one get off, I think, here, which is really shit, and we get a grotesque experiment from it. Uh, there'll be Echo Blade as well, which will silence you. The assistants will also do a blowtorch face them away. You can see Dugs end up body pulling the infested mob there, which we actually probably could have skipped. I think we only end up 1% over anyway, so we may very well have needed to kill them anyway. Um, we kind of did plan this out, but it ended up still kind of flying by at the seat of our pants. Um, again, make sure with the assistance guys, you are getting those transfigurations. The other one is transmute uh, enemy to goo or something like that. You need to make sure you're getting them as well. The grotesque experiments, they're a pain in the ass. They leave a dot on you. They have a fair bit of health and they hit quite hard. The assistance, again, just making sure you're facing that blowtorch away. Now, the Echo Blade is a frontal cone. Anyone that it hits, it will silence. So obviously, do not point that at your group. Do not point that at your healer. If you are a tank that relies around uh, mitigation, self-healing, or whatnot through, uh, which is negated by being silenced, you really need to be aware of that as well, as there's no way to avoid it, but you are going to cop it. So just have something planned around that. We're going to pull this alchemist in uh, with the assistant or the two alchemists and the assistants. Again, just making sure we're getting the transfiguration uh, where then once these are done, I'm going to pull that uh, mastermind in that's at the top of the screen now. 
With the masterminds, guys, something to be aware of is wherever you pull them, they will come to you. When they set up shop though, and they start doing their energy lashes and their uh, leech globules, they're pretty much staying there. They're not moving unless you line of sight them. So just be careful in regards to where you are pulling them as moving them from there becomes quite difficult. The masterminds are going to do an energy lash. The energy lash doesn't do a hell of a lot of damage outside four to five weeks. Raging wise as well, it wasn't too bad. Now I technically should have pulled them back into this mastermind. I was just a little bit cautious about raging. However, raging didn't really end up doing much at all. So then we're going again along the left wall. We're going to grab the weapons tester and the alchemist. Now the weapons testers, again, make sure you're watching out for that echo blade. You can see the echo blade cast coming off now. Uh, and I'm silenced. They also do a thing called force cannon, which punts you backwards. Be really careful in regards to your positioning here with force cannon, as you don't want to get punted back into something else and end up body pulling. Uh, that's pretty much it guys. Again, you're not going to have too many problems getting through these packs if you just take it easy. Moving up into the probably the nastiest trash pack in the dungeon is the double mastermind, uh, the alchemist and the assistant here. Again with the assistant, just make sure that you are watching for the transfiguration serum uh, and interrupting that. With this one, use your brain. You don't want to push all four mobs into raging at once. Uh, if it's something you're going to struggle healing through as there is a fair bit of damage going out. We got the uh, assistant and the alchemist down first and then we push the masterminds. Masterminds really weren't too bad. If you do have a lot of trouble or you are, you know, really struggling to get through the key on whatever level, perhaps don't, if it's on this week, perhaps don't push both mobs into uh, raging at once. Or if you've got a druid, you can always soothe one off and take a lot of uh, pressure off with that as well. So then we're on to Rixa here, guys. Generally, there's two options here. One that you can uh, hero on Rixa. The other is that you can hero on Razdunk at the end. We hero on Rixa. Uh, it, it just it just tends to be, I don't know, the best thing for us. Uh, it's not like Rixa's a hard boss. It's just, again, a lengthy one. It's the same as Razdunk. They're both sort of longish boss fights. Do it wherever you need to. Rixa's going to put Chemical Burn, which is a dot on you. It actually does a fair amount of damage in Tyran. She'll cover the floor in uh, Azerite spray. You can see shit gets sprayed across the platform as well that you just don't want to stand in. Rixa will also do uh, a propellant blast, which you want to bait onto the Azerite pools to actually push it off the platform to make sure that you've got space on the platform to move. The Rixa realistically is not a hard boss. Now, if you're a DK uh, and you get hit by propellant blast and you're trying to get out of the way, remember that you can disadvance. It will stop you from getting pulled back. Um, otherwise you don't want to get pushed off the platform if you are anyone in this case as going into the uh, Azerite on the outside will do damage to you and it's just not what you want. So once Rix is dead, uh, just beware as well. Sometimes there's a bug where the repellent blast is still going and will push you around. Now, if you were doing your second death skip right now, of course you would be at 100% uh, trash as well and you would be mounting up and you would be going for a run all the way to the top. We are not, so we are clearing up this uh, hill right now, which is generally unfavorable. Uh, it just depends on what's infested up here on what week. There's actually nothing infested this week on the way we're going, so it's not too bad. To show you what the death skip's like is that you would mount up and you would run and you can see on this week where it was teeming infested, tyrannical volcanic, there was quite a few infested up here. So uh, death skipping, this is a not a bad option on this week. What you do is you run all the way to the top, you die at the base of the stairs, your healer will go up and shadow melt on the platform or they have their soul stone or their battle res on the platform and then they'll mass res you and that's the way you skip the trash there guys. Again, you kind of negate the last two sections of the dungeon which is fairly poor dungeon design let's be real, uh, but it saves you having to kill up this hill. Now killing up the hill guys, uh, the, the big mechanical things aren't too bad, they do a charge shot you don't really have to worry about. Uh, make sure that you don't interrupt the overcharge because uh, mages can actually spell steals uh, overcharge if you have one of them in your group, which is a large haste buff for them, I believe. Um, the Sky Scorchers will do a, a red beam called uh, uh, Azerite Heatseeker. That does quite a bit of damage. You need to watch out for that. We end up shrouding one of these packs up here. We figured we may as well use it since it was up. We probably could have skipped this War Machine as well, but I've pulled it. Again, though, I think we end up about one, 
one and a half percent over. So we may have needed it anyway. Um, so just again, through going through these mobs, guys, you can see the charge shot going off from the war machine. It's not too bad, but obviously just be uh, aware of what you're playing to in regards to your affixes. The technician does the overcharge. We're letting that go off so the mage can spell steal it. The Azerite heart seekers coming out from the sky scorchers really need to be watched. If you have two sky scorchers, they enrage and they target somebody, the one person with a double Azerite uh, heat seeker you can get quite fucked up. The technician will try and repair the war machine. Make sure you're interacting that. If you have a DK in your group and you run over any crawler mines, death grip them off their cast of seek and destroy. They then just become a free punching bag for percent. Not that they give a lot of percent, but that is a way you can do it. And then we're up to the last pull up here, which is the technician, double sky scorcher and the war machine. So again, with this one, you just need to use your brain. The sky scorchers pretty much are the most dangerous things in this pack. You need to make sure you're interrupting them. One other thing I forgot to mention, and I, I think it was, um, I can't remember what they're called, but they do a thing called artillery barrage. Uh, I don't know if they are called observers or what they're called, but they do want a thing called artillery barrage on the hill. Make sure you interrupt it or you don't stand in a large orange circle, but really try and interrupt the artillery barrage. Um, you can see here we're trying to get the sky scorches down as quick as possible, interrupt the repair on the technician so the war machine doesn't last any longer. Uh, letting the overcharge go off so the mage can spell still it and that's about it. You can see here the war machine was worth 2.88%. We were on 99.5% to end. Um, so it really wasn't too bad in regards to, to all round how we did this. So then we're on to the last boss, which is Razdunk. Now, Razdunk isn't too bad. He's fairly simple. The biggest thing with Razdunk is managing your positioning on the platform. Uh, so you can see that there's two flying teacups that come out of him straight away and head off to uh, the top and the side of the platform here. So you can see that the top of the platform is about to become very bad and the right side of the platform is going to become bad. So we're going to move to the bottom left corner. It's the safe spot. It's the biggest thing you need to watch out for with this. The Gatling gun does an absolute truck ton of damage to your DPS, especially on Tyram weeks. As the tank, you can run through a couple of ticks and you'll be okay. As DPS, if you're gonna run through it, you probably need some kind of personal defensive in order to not get completely murked by it. An ice block, a darkness, uh, a faint, something along those lines to ensure that you're not getting absolutely trucked. Uh, again, biggest thing I can I can go on and on about is your positioning on the platform. Always watch where the teacups are. They will do their route. They will then sit there for a bit. They will then fly off somewhere else and they will go to their next position. Again, you can see top and left side is bad. We're moving over to the right side. Sometimes you will get caught with Gatling guns though, where he will stop, he will not move and you will have no choice but to run away and take a tick of it. Just be aware of that. The homing missiles will always go to the range if there is one in your group. Just make sure they're running that out. You do not need to run the boss a country mile away from it. As long as you're not standing in the orange circle, you're okay. With Gatling Gun as well, just make sure you watch its range. Sometimes it can actually hit you even though you think you're in front of it. Uh, and sometimes you can think you're like behind the boss and it will still hit you. Just be safe with it. Configuration drill is going to come out and there's going to be two ads that spawn. Watch the AOE circles on these. They're bigger than they appear. And you can see I actually got hit by it then when I wasn't standing in it because the area of effect is much bigger than it seems. Now, again, these Sky Scorcher ads are going to do the Azerite Heat Seekers. So again, you want to get them down as quickly as you can. And you want to make sure that your whole group is staying positioned around the three uh, pylons or pillars that are going to come up out of the uh, platform that you are going to use to break his bubble. So when you get a big red arrow on your head, make sure you're running over to one of the three pillars, standing there, letting it drop on you. As soon as the arrows disappeared, move out of the way. He's then going to uh, try and squash you and it'll break his shell. Now there is a slight cheese that you can do in this. You can get him to 60%, wait for a Gatling gun. You can then blow heroism and try and push him below, or it's 50, maybe it's 60 or 55%. Blow hero and try and push him below, which will skip this entire phase. However, you need big, big, big DDPS to be able to achieve that. Once the shell is off, it's back to business as usual. Again, be watching where the teacups are going. Watch where the Gatling gun is going. Make sure you're getting out of position to get hit by that. Um, moving into the whatever quadrant is the safe zone. And that is pretty much it, guys. Um, so Razdunk's nearly dead here at the end of this. And you can see this is a pretty comfortable two chest. Uh, 
And, and I was quite surprised. It really wasn't sort of uh, as bad as I thought this dungeon was going to be because we'd never done it with no death skips before. We'd never done it in a in a really sort of uncheesy fashion. So it's good to see that you can do it without needing, uh, you know, full death skips. So that is pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions whatsoever that I can help with, please hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for everyone that's come over and said hello on Twitter or followed. Come find me on Discord, guys, and I'll see you all next time. See you, fam. Shadow.